Today, we're gonna review the AsomTom Q7 Fat Tire Mountain Bike. It's got 120 millimeter front suspension, a geared 750 watt hub motor, as well as a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. Comes in at a reasonable budget price. So uh, let's... Come on. This one comes in black paint, but there are other colors. Check it out. This one has a through axle, a feature that might go unnoticed to the untrained eye. And right away, looking at these forks, I can tell they do have about 50% more travel than we find on a typical budget-friendly fat tire e-bike. The controller is in the housing here. It looks so beefy, it actually almost looks like a mid-drive. However, it is not. It is a geared hub motor and it is the Buffang 750 watt sustained, which is good. Buffang is a good brand. Appears to be a mechanical disc brake. Interesting, it says mineral on there. Usually mineral oil is for hydraulic disc brakes. So this was actually the first time I encountered cable actuated hydraulic disc brakes. So this is kind of like a mashup of a mechanical disc brake and a hydraulic disc brake. You kind of get the benefits of both worlds, but we'll see how they perform out on the road. The way they work is they have a cable running from the brake lever down to the caliper, and then there's a little bit of hydraulic fluid in the caliper, which should give you a little extra braking force. What size rotors? Front rotor does not come installed. It says 160 millimeter rotor on the rear brake and it has a sporty looking red caliper. Here's another feature to the untrained eye. These brakes are actually very interesting. This is the first rotor I've seen on a budget friendly bike that's a two piece. Two piece rotors are better. Uh, they heat up and as they heat up, they kind of expand and contract. So generally high performance brakes come in a two piece setup to allow basically for that rotor to expand and contract a little bit. It's really beneficial for when you're using a lot of heavy braking for like uh, say downhill mountain biking, for example. I have a feeling the other rotor is gonna be in here. Two amp charger, basic headlight, there it is. Here is the front rotor, 160 millimeter, two piece rotor as well. Pro tip for you, don't ever touch your brake pads or your rotors. If you get the oil from your fingers and the brake pads, it'll cause them to squeak. Looks like a hurricane came through here and the storm has passed. Just a few things to put on the bike. You get one of these nice little tool kits and a thank you letter. You'll have to get your own to see what it says. Battery drops right on down. Pretty big battery, 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 13 in series, three in parallel. That's what 13 S 3P means. Internal cells, high quality, 5300 cell. It's actually a lot more information than most batteries give us. You got a little button. So if you missed it in my other videos, 15 amp hour battery, two amp charger, 15 divided by two is 7.5 amp hours to charge the thing from empty to full. But if you only use half the battery, it takes about three hours to charge back up to the top. Some simple numbers, but it's not the last of the numbers we'll be doing on this bike. Here's a closer look at the through axle. Time to put this guy on. It's pretty simple, don't be intimidated. Then just go through and tighten them in like a star pattern. Batteries charged. Shimano tourney derailleur. Seven gears that are Shimano. Seven speed Shimano shifter. Quarter twist throttle. Ergonomic hand grips. Zoom brake levers. These are mechanical disc brakes. Warning labels. Wide saddle. Suspension can either lock or unlock. 120 millimeters of travel, which is actually more than most of these bikes. The typical is more like 80 millimeters of travel, so about 50% more. If you wanna charge the bike without removing the battery, here's the charge port. Warning, don't worry, we know what we're getting ourselves into. Small little touch most people might not notice. Um, I like that the kickstand on this one is mounted back here, so you can rotate the pedals aka roll the bike backwards without hitting the kickstand. Bike is gonna look better without these. It's another look at the backside of the caliper. All right, let's power this thing up. Battery is fully charged, shows a percentage, 100%. Try out the pedal assist modes. Eco, you can bump it down to zero. Eco is one, normal, all the way to five, sport mode. Tap the info button, so it shows your max speed, average speed, odometer, time, power. I like that it has a watt display so you can see the output of the motor. All right, let's get this thing out on the road. Actually, let's look at the headlight. Hold the plus button, turns on. 
pretty typical normal headlight. You can see it shining uh, over there. Does not come with a rear tail light or brake light. It does come with a reflector. I didn't put it on and it looks like a horn. Mm, no, not a horn. We'll have to find out what that button does. All right, dudes, we're gonna take this thing out for a ride. It says put these tires to 20 PSI. Pump these up just a bit. I'm running mine on 16.8 per usual. We'll start the Strava so we can track our official distance. So first things first, we're gonna do a hill test on this bike. We have it on uh, maximum pedal assist, wide open throttle, 20% grade. I weigh 200 pounds, but thing, 750 watt motor. Can it do the climb? Not quite on this bike. Now, typically what that means is this bike is gonna be geared for more of a top speed. So let's see how it does on a rollout, about 10 miles an hour. So with a little bit of rollout, it can do it. Welcome to an absolutely beautiful day here in sunny Los Angeles. Let's get this thing out. A little bit breezy out here today, but we'll go ahead and start out and pedal to zero. Throttle does not do anything. No assistance on zero, but let's put it on one and do, we'll try out the pedal assist mode. So a cadence sensor kicks right in right away shift up through the gears a bit here brings us up to about 11 miles an hour which is typical right away on this bike i'm noticing it's a little bit more stretched out than the typical bike i review not by much but just a subtle nuance to this bike so it does put you a little bit more in like a, a mountain bike riding position for sure the handlebars have a small amount of rise to them but not, not like much rise. Pedal assist two, feel the power right away. Got to shift up to about gear five for a natural feeling cadence. Got right around 15, now pedal assist three. Feeling that boost. Shifting up to gear six feels natural at 18 miles an hour. And pedal assist five. So, or I mean pedal assist four, Top gear of seven now cruising at 20, 20.4 20 according to that. And pedal assist five. Oh wow, big jump up in power on pedal assist five. So it's a huge difference from four to five. However, are those numbers accurate? Let's verify up with the GPS in my left hand here. GPS is showing 16. This is showing 18. Pretty close. So right away I'm noticing uh, the, the power on this bike, once you have it tuned up to like three or so, you can feel it and the cadence sensor kicks in very quickly. Probably only like quarter second lag. For, so I'm not pedaling, pedaling, motor. Still don't know what this button over here does. You know what? I actually just figured it out. It turns the throttle on and off. So you press that button, it turns the throttle off. Press that button again, throttle is back on. So that's actually a pretty sweet feature. I haven't seen that on any of these bikes yet, but I could definitely see that being good for safety. And also, you know, if you're trying to get yourself a little exercise in, you can turn that thing off. I guess I should note that even if you do turn the throttle off, you still do get pedal assist while you're pedaling. Now this is a mountain bike. So let's take it off the road a little bit. Definitely has a mountain bike geometry to it. I'd say this thing is definitely more suitable for riding off-road and stuff than like a typical cruiser style fat tire e-bike I review. Just like the geometry of it, the position, the angle of the fork on the front. So it does have the power display here. Let's crank it up to pedal assist five. Show it 800,000 watts. Actually, it's just pinned. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's just pinned at a thousand or 999. So it's showing 31 on the speedometer. Kind of run out of gear a little bit. So this thing moves. <laughs> so based on my hill test and that kind of top speed run there, this bike is definitely tuned for more like higher speed cruising or you get your power band kind of kicks in at higher speeds. So this thing felt like plenty powerful up, you know, above like 25 to 30. However, on that steep 20% grade, it was, you know, it wasn't thriving on the super steep uphill from a stop under throttle only. Let's see what it can do with uh, top speed on throttle. So pedal assist five under throttle only. Hub motor definitely makes a little bit of noise. Typical for a geared hub motor. 
It's the same buffeting motor we see on a lot of a lot of these bikes. So under throttle only, this thing's bringing me up to like 28, and this thing actually might have cruise control. There is indeed. So it's just holding me cruise control. This is cool. Quick grab of the brakes will cut that motor off though, so you're safe. We'll do an acceleration test, zero to top speed, under throttle only. It's a little bit of a headwind. I weigh 200 pounds, so your performance will vary based on that number. Uh, ready, go. Ease is on that power in the beginning. 10, 15, 20, 25, 28 or so however if you bump it down to pedal assist one let's see what it does to the power oh it still gives you full full uh, throttle this bike does kind of have you lean forward a little bit more than like cruiser style bikes so if you're looking for like an upright cruiser style bike uh, just be aware this one does have a slightly more aggressive riding position and geometry Kind of targeted more for the aggressive kind of rider probably who's going to be you know getting out there and wanting to put some power down and you know wanting to get off the beaten path a little bit you know now the suspension on this bike is definitely more travel and more firm than a lot of the budget bikes i review it is a hard tail so you know you can feel a lot of the bumps and stuff but this is definitely based on like the riding, the, the frame geometry and the angle of that fork, more suitable for riding off-road and some light trail riding compared to a lot of the bikes I review. Coming into the gentle hill, let's see how it does on pedal assist four here. You can hear that motor working. You can hear the gears turning putting out 600 watts of power, 500 watts of power, pulls us right up the hill, absolutely no problem for the Bafang motor paired up to the 15 amp hour 48 volt battery pack in the down tube here. This thing will just chug along, giving you about 80 watts of power, 100 watts of power at about 18 miles an hour. So, I mean, if you're just out cruising, this thing could probably get you quite a bit of range with that 15 amp hour 48 volt battery. But you know, if you, if you ramp it up and use a thousand watts, you're gonna go through the battery 10 times faster than 100 watts. Yeah, you can see those flags up there blowing. It's a windy day out here. Uh, gears work. Well, you just tap on this little guy up here and it'll downshift you. And this index shifter here brings you up to seven. Everything works very seamlessly and smooth. Wow, look at the mountains out there. Absolutely beautiful, clear day out here. And truly, this mountain bike style electric bike should be out there in the mountains riding. I don't think we're gonna have time to make it all the way out there today, but we'll see about hitting some features around here a little bit. If you guys would like to see this bike on a trail out in the mountains, drop a comment down below. A little bit more commenting on the cadence sensor. It's, it's definitely not one of those ones that's made for grandpa where, you know, it just eases on the power. It's like once you start pedaling, it, it gives you all the power pretty much quickly. So I actually prefer that, you know, when I want my power, I want it. Let's go up this thing. Definitely very mountain bikey feel to it for sure. It feels happy riding out on these bumpy terrains so first range update we are at 4.83 miles the thing is showing a hundred percent as well as five bars so i don't know how precise this is going to give us a measurement on our battery i mean it's certainly not a hundred percent dude i do like that cruise control though like you just kind of hold the thing a little bit and I don't know exactly how you set it. 
but like I'm just cruising at 10 right now, like doing nothing. What does that cloud say up there? I cannot read that. It's upside down. Adele, you made. Pretty sure that says Adele, you made us cry. So being that this is a mountain bike, we'll try the stair test here. Don't feel super comfortable doing this, but oh yeah, no problem. Riding in the grass, no problemo. Really the biggest danger over here is running over dog poop. There are no fenders on this bike. <laughs> we got a new message up there. Now it says, Beyonce. Beyonce, you made music history. Somebody's got way too much money. Let's roll down these stairs. Let's rip it up the sand. See if we can go up this hill. Yeah. Very hard tail mountain bikey feel to this bike. Definitely feels like you can do some aggressive riding on this thing. This isn't really a bike that the steering wheel wants to stay straight on its own when you take your hands off. Let's see about this. I was under throttle only. A decent little climb there. The acoustic bikes take a little more work to get up that hill. Send it. Let's see how it does here. You can downshift more than one gear at a time, about 30 gears on this Shimano shifter. Four inch wide tires per usual, bringing us right on through the sand. I feel a little bit of that sand kicking up on me because there are no fenders on this bike, uh, which does help keep the weight down, keep it a little more nimble. Not sure if it's waterproof or not. I'm not riding in the water anyway. One thing you gotta love about the fat tire e-bikes is just the places they can take you, the adventures. Battery is still showing 100%. It literally says 100% and five bars. So not sure how accurate that is. We're at eight miles. So I mean, there's no way it's 100%. Oh, there we go, 80%. So it just went from 100% to 80%. So this doesn't really have a true percentage meter on here. This thing is just cooking though in the sand. I mean, 300 or 200 300 watts going 15 miles an hour got a new message in the sky stream can't read that so from the factory there does appear to be a small discrepancy between uh, my distance it says 8.87 basically a tenth of a mile short of nine on here we're showing 10.6 all right have it on pedal assist five let's see what can do here uh, gps in my left hand will lag a little bit we have a tailwind now. So it tops out around. This bike feels fast for sure. It's a fast, powerful bike. Now it's time to put these brakes to the test. 19, 20, nobody's behind me, and Break. Pretty decent. Uh, the levers, I don't love. They're a little pointy uh, where you grab them. So I have felt better levers. One thing about those floating rotors is they do well for like heat buildup. Cause like typically your, your rotors, they get hot and they can warp. The two piece setup allows the uh, disc to expand and contract a little bit which gives uh, some pretty good performance benefits. So from 22, stop. So I mean, they're, they're not like the strongest performing brakes only being 160 millimeter rotors instead of like 180, which is kind of more the standard for these bikes. However, they should be able to perform uh, consistently and not break down over time 
because it'll handle that heat buildup much better. So for example, if you have a 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brake, but it's not a floating rotor, you might have excellent braking performance right out of the gate, but heat buildup over time, if, you're, if you repeatedly pull on those brakes, like you're doing a long downhill mountain biking session, then you might start to see a breakdown of performance. On the contrary, a floating rotor should be able to handle uh, long-term performance like that better. Just an FYI, in the description box, I have a link to some of my other fat tire e-bike reviews as well. Try to keep my reviews as objective as possible, showing you know the performance characteristics of the bike so you know what you're getting when you buy it. Some sort of commercial or something happening over here. A little bit of Hollywood behind the scenes. Heading on home here, I'm seeing uh, three out of five bars, AKA 50% according to the percentage meter. GPS tracking has us at 15 miles. All right, so final thoughts on the SM Tom Q7. It's got a strong buffeting motor, strong battery, 15 amp hour, legit powertrain. From a stop, it doesn't like to climb particularly steep hills under throttle only. However, where you really feel the power of this motor is from about five miles an hour up to 30, almost 30. It's really interesting that the bike comes with those floating brakes, but it is like a smaller disc. So I'd have to say that the brakes are not the greatest. I don't love the way the levers feel. They're a bit, they're a bit pointy to grab and to really get that braking force, you gotta kind of pull them kind of hard. I didn't find the mechanical actuated hydraulic disc brakes on 160 millimeter rotors particularly impressive. They kind of felt more like just normal mechanical brakes to me. Looking at the final range numbers, we did uh, 17 miles. It's showing two out of five bars remaining. So, I mean, it's pretty much on point with, you know, what I would expect from 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. Generally on these sort of bikes, I get anywhere from about 25 to 35, depending on how I ride it. And that this bike would fit definitely in that same range. So judging by how far I rode and how much battery I have left, I'd say I'd comfortably get 25 to 35, maybe 40 miles on this bike, depending on how hard I push it and how I'm riding. So very typical powertrain and power delivery. Also, the suspension on this bike has about 50% more travel than we typically see on these budget-friendly electric fat tire bikes. You can either open it up and use it or lock it out. The bike does come in multiple different colors. And if you have decided that this is the bike for you, I have a link below this video in the description box. However, if this is not the one, watch this video next.